Good morning. I'm pretty interested in how reserved you guys were this morning versus what it's going to look like tonight. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was like, will they dance? No, they will not. Um, how is everybody? Awesome. We're good? I'm nervous, but that's cool. Um, I just wanted to, before we get started, bring your attention to the cameras around the room. Um, we've got a great team with us, really good energy. They're going to capture all of us so that we can, the, as you guys know, the word for this year is amplify, so that we can amplify the message outside of the room. Um, the other thing I just wanted to make sure that you guys know to begin with is the majority of the speakers that we've got with us this weekend, it's new. Yep, I've been doing this for a while, my fucking voice is shaking, <laughs> and I'm nervous. So what I'm really proud of is creating a space where people that have not done speaking before or not shared their journey or not given a presentation in their field of expertise get to come into a really safe space and share. So I know that you guys are all going to be supportive, but it's just like when we're on Zoom, the more you smile and you nod and you, you know, give that energetic feedback, the happier everyone feels. Is that cool? Um, the other thing, we have a roaming mic. So Jack's going to do about 20 Ks, I reckon's a good idea, in the room this morning. Um, so if you want to speak, you put your hand up and Jack's going to run, run over to you. Um, so as always, it's a conversation. It's, it's us just hanging out, even though it feels weird being up here. <laughs> um, welcome. How's everyone feeling? Who's still nervous? Because I know there's a lot of there's a lot of that like introvert. I don't really like big groups of people. How many people <laughs> felt like that before they got here today? Okay, so most of the room, yeah. So we're all in the same boat, including myself, who's got my room where I can go hide away from everybody. Go for my run. How was yoga? So was it good? Yeah. So awesome. She was in Did she? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! <laughs> She was really good. She's a musician. I actually yeah. had that conversation with her first. She's yeah. saying. Is she? Ah. I'm sad that I missed that. Cool. I'm glad you guys all had fun. Did everyone eat breakfast? Yes. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> all right. First up, I want to say thank you. I knew I was going to get emotional right now. Um, it means the world to me, you guys being here. I know it's not easy to take time out of life and kids and fucking, where's Melissa? How many flights? <laughs> Just run us all through that in case anybody does not know. What happened? What happened? Where did you leave from? Uh, from home, drove five hours. Let's, wait, wait, <laughs> I'm just deflecting to you guys so I can get my shit together. <laughs> true is that working? Is that working? It is now, yeah. So I left home, drove five hours to the airport, stayed the night in a motel, drove to the airport, flew two hours, got in a car with Lauren, drove, what was that, an hour and a half? To the wrong Well. And she's got to do it all over again to get home. So it's not like you just get here, right? Even if your journey was not that big. And I know some of you, your journeys were big in other ways, like Jetstar, who's not flying Jetstar ever again. <laughs> um, but no matter your journey to get here, oh, Christy took her international flight. That's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys being here. It's been a slow, what feels like to me as a slow build from where we started to where we are now, but when we look at, there's a couple of photos in there, not lots of photos, but a couple of photos of, you know, the very first retreat, which um, was in the Blue Mountains in Sydney, not really in Sydney. Um, the feedback was, we don't want to drive that far after getting <laughs> to the plane again. I was like, sweet, we won't do that again. 
Um, but we used the dining table as the runway for our award giving that year. It was very exciting. Christy and I may have never spoken again after a trip to the supermarket, <laughs> but she's still here, so that's super exciting. Um, but yeah, massive thank you to every single one of you guys for being here and making this weekend what it is, but more importantly, what we do on a daily basis, what it is. So throughout this weekend, it's your journey. You guys get to choose what you take away. You get to go deeper into your personal and professional development. The more times you come to things like this, sometimes we can fall into the trap of feeling like we, we're not gonna take away as much. But I think it's really, you know, the onus is on us to look at what's given to us. And even if you just take away those two or three little nuggets that you go, oh shit, that could literally change either me as a human or my business. That stuff's really important. Um, and those of you that have not, who's never been to a conference type scenario before, cool, Emma, yeah, cool. So there's people and it's like, wow, cool. This is how we can step out of our daily life, get around a group of, you know, we're not all women, but we are today. Mark, team. Um, <laughs> essentially, you know, we've got, we do have three mum safe trainer males. They're not super active and sometimes I'm like, oh, but anyway, that's their, their road to walk. Um, it's a real good opportunity to connect with each other, which I know you guys have been doing already. Um, do try not to stay in your comfort zone, says the woman who always stays in the comfort zone, only to one person at a conference. Um, but do try and meet each other. We've got so many collaborations going on within the group already. You never know who you're gonna talk to, who's gonna go, I'm thinking about doing this, and you're like, well, me too, and then you're either accountability buddies or you launch something together, and you know, it's super exciting. Um, reflect on your journey to today, and there's gonna be little, it'll come, oh, there's one coming. Um, little action symbols in some of my slides. What that means is pick up your pen and write something down. Yeah, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, but I highly recommend it. It'll give you an opportunity to re reflect on where you've come from, where you are right now, and where you want to go to. Reflect on how you move through your business and life. And my whole presentation as we move into that today is really just about bringing to attention things that you might want to be aware of and then you can choose what to do with that information. I want you guys to all dream big. And this is something that's been a little, not frustration, but I have this awareness that maybe, just maybe, I've allowed or offered people the space to play small. And what I mean by that is not play small in the scheme of things, but by saying it's not just all about the financial goals. It's not about how much work you can do. And what I really want to make clear this weekend is that that bit is your foundation layer. Yep, that bit is the bit that makes sure that you can dream big and you can go after it and you can be excited by it and you can not get run down and you can do all of the things that you want to do. So I really would love to try and ignite that, holy shit, when I was 25, these were my dreams. Lauren, you might have been 15, I don't know. <laughs> the baby's in the room, but there's a lot of us that are over 40, right? When you're over 40, your confidence can, or some, sometimes your confidence starts to dip, you start to go, oh, well, I've not achieved it yet, maybe it's too late, maybe it's all these things, it's not too late. And what you guys have all done over the last, by being any part of the MumSafe team, is lay a foundation, which you can then go build upon. And that's what I want you to take away this weekend. Oh, and then, of course, take away what you need. Um, <laughs> so you guys know it's our mission to provide safe and effective exercise for women, women at all stages of motherhood. Should I do that again? So the mission is to provide safe and effective exercise to women at every stage of motherhood. It really was, when we started, the majority mums and bubs fitness groups, yeah? And it was a real kind of progression to move away from that um, and part of me is like oh is that out of our niche is it out of our niche but no it's not because it's so important that the information that you guys have to deliver goes to women that have had babies that are every single age um, so I'm really proud of thank you <laughs> proud of the way that we've adapted the brand but also those of you that have gone hey Jen I don't feel like I fit here anymore and it's like okay I know that you do but how do we make sure that it's you feel like you fit here and that everyone on the outside goes, 
this is not just about mums and brand new babies. Absolutely it is. And some of you may very well be in that space of just specialising in younger mums and babies, and that's what I did the whole time I was training clients. But every single person here belongs, whether you're running mums and bub sessions, whether you're only working with women of teenagers, whether you don't specifically work with women at all, whether you've got dads and men and boys and teenagers coming in. But you know that when a woman walks through the door, you can make sure that she's looked after safely and effectively. So I'm super excited by that. Who knows what this means? Who did their homework? Did anyone know there was homework? It was on your invite. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> hopefully you've done part one of your module or one of the modules, your heartfelt goal setting. Yep. So this little action thing means grab a pen and try and write something down. <laughs> what I would like for you to do now is write down your two core values. You don't need to... I made them my screensaver. Yes! <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> what are they, Lauren? Um, freedom and connection. Amazing. I love it. Awesome. So Lauren's got her values. I hope that everyone else does. Um, if you don't, we're not going to spend a lot of time going through values because there's a lot of that content within the portal. But if anyone's like, shit, I've got five, let's have that conversation over dinner tonight. I can help you to get from five to two relatively easily, yeah? Has everyone got between two and Becky? Yeah, good. Um, <laughs> two and five values written down. Yes. Yeah, anyone just like values that I'm still stuck on values and please own it if it is because I will help you, not now, but I will help you. Okay. So we've written down our values. You guys know that your life values underpin every single thing that I can support or this community can support you with to grow. Yeah, if you don't know your values, we don't know where you're going or what you want to achieve out of basically anything. And remember those values fit into all of the life areas. I've got them on my screen because I always forget. So you've got family and relationships. You've got love and romance. So when you think family and relationships, not your partner. So that comes separately. The one that normally sits at the bottom, yeah? You think that it's just gonna work. Um, you've got health and fitness, which for the majority of people in this room, health and fitness is relatively easy or you realize straight away when it's not working, right? You're like, holy shit, I'm looking after everyone else. I'm not looking after myself. I've got to pick that up. So we do that. You've got business, spirituality or religion, whatever calls to you. Um, leisure time, personal development and financial. So remember when that you're thinking about those values, they fit into all of those life areas or they will speak to each life area. So if, if your value is family, I will question that. It's like family is a very important life area to you, but is that your actual value? Yeah. Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> I want to switch directions a little bit now and talk about words. So we all know that the words that we use with our clients are really, really important. Those of you that have done Safe Return to Exercise recently, we have a lot of conversation about words and the language that we use. But also the words that we tell ourselves are really important. And don't smile at me now. I'm like, shit, I'm going to be I like, smile at me, don't smile, smile, don't smile, smile. <laughs> Um, the words that we put out into, the words that go around in our head are really important and then the words that we put out into the world are really important. So for the last three years we have had words, words that I attach to myself and I very kindly attach to you guys and I'm saying, <laughs> um, but it's important to me that that word aligns with my journey but also what we're bringing to the brand and it's fascinating the way that that shit plays out. So 2021. Oh no, let's go 2020 first. 2020 was Impact. This was the original team. This was the team that walked on the table. There's only one person that's no longer part of the team, which I'm super proud of. Yeah, so hands up if you're in that picture. In fact, stand up if you're in that picture. Guys, <laughs> nice. love it. Thank you for hanging around. You guys are awesome. <laughs> um, but the word was Impact. Now, if I think back then, I'd probably go, oh, we didn't really have that big an impact. But what we did start to do is lay that foundation to have a big impact in the world. 2021, we moved to evolve. I did not know what that word was gonna bring when we decided on it at the beginning of the year. 
what happened in, as we moved from, we had Body Beyond Baby affiliate and Mark, it was all Mark's fault. He said, I don't think we should, we started using, Mark brought to the table Mum Safe. We're gonna call everyone Mum Safe trainers. Everyone on the Body Beyond Baby website is gonna be a Mum Safe trainer. It's like, sweet, that's a good idea. That sounds cool. And then for a while it was like, this is weird. We've got Mum Safe, we've got Body Beyond Baby. It's like, we've got to say, hey, we're the Body Beyond Baby affiliate team. This means this. And then by the way, we're all called Mum Safe trainers. So I think it was, I don't know, early on, middle of the year, and it was like, we just need to get rid of the Body Beyond Baby brand. And which was interesting to me because that brand has been my brand since 2000 and, what year was Marley born? Eight. <laughs> um, and it had evolved with me over time. But interestingly, it didn't feel like I, it wasn't a question about should I let it go. It was like, yep, yeah, that's what we need to be. Um, that's what you guys are telling us. Again, Body Beyond Baby, we think of mums and bubs. We need to evolve. But at the beginning of the year when we chose that word, we did not know that that's what the word was going to be. I mean, that's what was going to happen within the business. In October of 2021, we launched the MumSafe brand. So I'm really fucking proud. This brand is not even a year old yet. Like next month, it's a year old. And I feel like already it's making the impact that we wanted it to make as Body Beyond Baby that wasn't quite just getting the traction that it needed to get. Um, and I'm really proud to tell people or to share with people what a mum safe trainer is, what you guys do, how you do it, how you're better than everybody else, <laughs> kindly. <laughs> um, you have to be, right? We have to be better than everyone else. So we all need to make sure that we're upholding those, you know, five, who knows the five criteria of being a mum safe trainer? Sarah's got it. <laughs> Jody's got it. Do you want to run run a mic to someone? Put them on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Hang on. Yeah. Um, Hang on. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah. um, safe return to exercise qualified. Yes. Partnered with a women's health physio. Yes. Committed to ongoing education. Yes, which we do for you, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, just got to do it. Insured. Properly insured. Properly, like, properly, properly insured. insured. And registered. Registered with a fitness body. Fitness body. Yeah. Well done. Good job. <laughs> awesome. And Lauren's one of our newest members, yeah. so that was pretty good. And you can well, remain a mum safe trainer now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just making sure that, you know, when you're going about life, if your insurance is slipping or your first aid certificate is slipping or something like that, just get on top of it. Because that's, it's our shared brand and it's your brand carrying that logo. Yeah. And then this year, 2022, is the year of Amplify. Now I've forgotten this word pretty much every time I've tried to think of this word. <laughs> What's that word again? Which is fascinating because it's not one like impact and evolve, it was like that was it from the real get go of the year, carrying along with me on the journey. And it's only been the last month or so, maybe when I've been thinking about our retreat and our time together, that I've actually start to, started to think about how that word may play out. Now, I pulled the definition of amplify because what I want you guys to think about today and over the weekend is not just how do we amplify the MumSafe brand, but how do you each choose to amplify your brand and your unique voice? Because when you do that, has to amplify the MumSafe brand, right? So really, when we talk about my job in MumSafe is to go, how do I help each and every one of you guys step into the next version of you or the version of you that you know that you are, that you've maybe not been brave enough to get out there and do yet, amplify your voice and have the biggest impact in your communities that you can possibly have. And when we're all doing that, I believe all the mums get looked after and the whole industry has to start taking notice and has to change. And then we'll deal with the doctors and shit later on. <laughs> so amplify means to increase the volume of, or especially using an amplifier, towards sound, but it makes sense to me, or enlarge upon or add detail to a story or statement. I think that's exciting. Every single day, every single conversation that you guys are having, you're adding, you're amplifying, your, the values that you stand for and the values that MumSafe stands for. So, 
So there's a little thing in the corner, yep. Becky. <laughs> what does amplify mean to you? I just also want to caveat, this is a pretty bold question to start with. I'm going to go through and does anyone feel scared when I say what does Amplify mean to you? It doesn't mean you have to come and get up on the stage or, you know, do any of that stuff. Me is like, yeah, you know me. <laughs> does anyone feel scared when I say what does Amplify mean? Yeah, a little bit? Yeah. Kate's like, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> I'll sing, I'll dance. <laughs> Would you like my response in song? Sure. <laughs> Always. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm going to give you permission to, or I'd like you to write something down now, but if it feels tricky, we're going to go on a little journey to get to, well, I don't need to be afraid of what Amplify means to me, because I think it does get a bit scary. Does anyone want to share what Amplify means to them? Jack's ready to run. I'm ready. So, Who's up? Doesn't need to make a whole lot of sense. Tamara's looking at oh, me. Oh, Alicia, awesome. Where am I going? I'm loud enough without the mic. No. <laughs> we're recording. We're recording. Um, I... You get to hold it oh, too thanks. sweet. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> just a little acknowledgement to Becca. She told me to be prepared for this answer. <laughs> so I was what? thinking about it this week. And um, Amplify means to me is like... Um, maybe taking on a staff member to spread my yeah. training in Bendigo and also to go through a rebrand yep. of my name because it like Body Beyond Baby, Mum Safe and all that, like I feel like my business name and my program, it's really confusing for my clients and it's not helping me get my message across. So that's something that I've been trying to avoid for the last year or so, but I feel like uh, coming into 2023, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So that's it's awesome. more clear. Yeah. I've got one more question, Alicia, just before you can you give that back. Yep. Um, how does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel um, more clear. Like, yeah, okay. I don't want to be, like, I feel like sometimes my message is a bit confusing because there's a lot of, like, people ask me, um, you know, oh, you're the, the strongest mum. And I'm like, no, my business is the strongest you fitness and then my program is this. So I feel like it will, um, I think I was a bit scared to just, go straight into the Strongest Mum program, Bendigo only, but I feel like yeah. I'm ready now and that's okay because that's me, so yeah. that's fine. Yeah. I just accept it now. And and who wants to, who, you're the Strongest Mum, how cool is that? Mm. <laughs> like that's what, like, you are the Strongest Mum, like fuck I am. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her biceps anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else want to share? We can have one more person. I like this, everyone's like. <laughs> <laughs> I know Lisa wants oh, to. Louise, Lisa's looking. awesome. Louise is sharing. Um, probably not as much detail as Alicia, <laughs> but mine is, it's very vague, um, to share a message that's bigger than what I offer. So you're using everyone else as well. Yep. Not just my message on social media or what I talk to my clients about. It's like getting the word out there beyond yeah, oh, that's probably better. Getting the word out there beyond my reach. I'm going to go for that. Yeah. Right, like, yeah. I started what I <laughs> How does that make you feel? Powerful. Yeah, yeah, cool. Bigger, powerful. Yeah. I like it. Bigger, Not powerful. alone. Not alone. Mm. you got all the friends. Who said that at lunch yesterday? I've now got all the friends that can help me. <laughs> <laughs> Was that you, Lisa? <laughs> we had the lunch. Yeah, yeah. What did you say? Can you remember? She wants to do all these things and, and now... She has friends to go I've to. Got friends, yeah. Yeah. I've got yeah. friends to help me. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Only friends who want to help you, I think, is what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Please help me. Yeah, cool. Nice. Um, okay. So whether you got something on the page about what Amplify means to you, or even if you did, and you kind of went, oh, that's what it means, but I just want to hide and hope that it gets done, because I know some of you might sit in that boat, we're gonna just talk about little awarenesses that we can bring to our lives and our world to give you permission to step out of that or at least allow yourself to be uncomfortable whilst being really supported by every single person in this room and all the people that are not with us this weekend. So I just said all the things for this slide um, <laughs> when I was talking about it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Was that on there before? No, 
No. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's the slide I talked about. Um, Alicia and Louise just shared what Amplify means to them. If I asked you why you run your business and what you want, who could tell me? Kate, awesome. Jack, <laughs> don't sit down, Jack. <laughs> you like ready to down. Um, I run my business because I just really, really, really want to help people. Okay. I, I'm getting emotional. That's okay. Um, I just so strongly feel that women deserve to be made to feel good yep. about themselves. And, and I want that. And that's why I started working with kids first. Yeah. Um, and that's why I, I work with mums now because I feel like helping mums is going to have the biggest impact um, in our world. And I just want every woman to feel good about herself. Yeah. Thank you. No, 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 don't. Don't let her go. <laughs> it's never that simple. <laughs> what do you want? What do I want? Yes. For so, myself or for my business? Well, it's the same thing in a way. So that's what you want for the women that you serve, which is awesome. And that's potentially the change that you want to make in the world. But what do you want? That's a really big question, Jeff. I know. Jeff. <laughs> it's like, it's not even. <laughs> I want to have an impact. Yeah, but what do you want? Oh, fuck, I don't know. But what, like, <laughs> okay, so let's say you, you had an impact. You never saw your kids, you never saw your husband, you never saw your family, you never got to train, but mm. your message was amazing. Is that okay? Yeah, no. No, no definitely not. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I want to have an impact, but I want to have a laugh, you know, yeah. I, I want to be able to give to myself as much as I give okay. to the women around me. Yeah. And I definitely don't do that. Cool. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you bring someone yeah, to work. Yeah, She's going to call out all my shit. <laughs> I love it. So if I asked you to write down what that was, the life that looked like, the things that enables you to do those things, yeah. could you do that? A hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what they are? Yeah. That, I, 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 you know, I, I've done my ideal day practice many times. Yeah. Um, and then like, how much money do you want to earn? How many holidays do you want to take? What legacy do you want to leave? Like, Let's start to think. I'm going to let Kate off the spot. Yeah, my heart's going. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me any more questions. <laughs> but what I mean is, we know, I know that every single one of you knows the difference you want to make in the world. Agreed? That's fucking easy, right? How? Thanks, Kate. <laughs> that, it, who feels like that's the easy bit? That's the selfless bit. That's the, you know, I can go out into the world, I can do good. Um, but who's been in a situation where they're doing good and it feels super shit? <laughs> Is that it? Everyone's put your hands up. Anyone else? Jack? Oh. <laughs> I know Jack has because we had a conversation. I didn't ask for permission to share the conversation. But I might do that now. Um, so I want you guys to know what you really want. But even more important to that, I'd like you to understand what's holding you back. Yeah, because... Yeah. Tissues. It's like my head's crying. Tissues, anyone? <laughs> I need so many. Because... <laughs> Jodie's sharing the tissues. Take a line. Yeah, I didn't know there was going to be so much crying. <laughs> hey, it's just me. Like... <laughs> it's fun. It's emotional. It's good. I cry. Normally when I'm in the seat, I'm like, fuck, I forgot my tissues too. I want you guys to understand what you want and what's holding you back and what's keeping you from play, like keeping you playing small. And I've said this to Jack and I've said it to a number of people, like I really fucking hope I've not allowed you guys to play small by saying to you or sharing with you, understand your life values. It's not about running yourself into the ground and, and earning all the money. Like, of course I want to earn all the money, but it's not, it shouldn't be a trade off to family and life. But I'm so aware that that does not mean that you don't get to grow big. That means that you've, and we're gonna talk about it in a second, built the foundation and to enable you to go up there, if that's what you want, yeah? So, number one, 
what we need is solid foundations. Your solid foundations are your whole life values. I know that each and every one of you has done the heartfelt goal setting worksheet. And if you haven't, I know that you're gonna run in the break up to the room, <laughs> get that shit done. Um, but if truly and honestly, if you've not done it and you need support, please ask for it because it underpins every single thing that we do. Every single time you come to me or you ask anyone a business question, what should I do, what do you think? What should the first response be? What are your two life values? Because I can't support you, I can't help you, I can't give you feedback if I do not know what, what is the thing that underpins your life. If the big shiny offer comes that takes you away from your family for six months and you wanna do the big shiny offer, who's gonna take the shiny offer if they, if you don't know your values, you might take that because you're like, I'm, I'm scared, I'm missing out, I need to go do the thing. And then you're gonna feel totally shit the whole time you're doing it. Or that maybe that was a bad example. The client, Rach had this last week, the client that wants to train at 6 a.m. on a Friday when you know that you've given yourself 6 a.m. on a Friday off because you wanna hang out with your kids, you wanna take them to school, you wanna do all those things. Or you wanna to go to the beach and walk and, you can say no to that knowing 100% that saying no is in alignment with your values and you're leaving space for something else to happen. Yeah, so the foundation, you need a solid foundation of values. Number two, we need to become aware of our glass ceiling. And we're gonna delve into that a little bit in a second. And then I wanna give you guys permission to dream big, yeah? Not the dream big, so I was the dream big. I'm gonna be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. I'm gonna do this, that and the other, but it was masculine, work-based. I'm gonna work from, I got up for, I would probably still do it again, but 30 days, I got up at 3 a.m. to write a book. A thousand words a day for 30 days is 30,000 words. The smallest book out there is probably about 30,000 words. But I thought I could live my whole life that like that. Not only did I write the book, going to bed at 11 o'clock, getting up at three, getting up at six for clients, trying to do the kids in between, compartmentalizing my life, allowing my relationship to break down to the point where, you know, Ben basically said to me, I don't know how to support you because I, you won't let me support you. You know, all of my friends, their, their husband, their, their husbands, the wives stay at home with the children and the husbands go out to work. That's their dynamic. And I would not let him do that. I think that that's okay to want to play an even part in the relationship, but it's not okay when you go so hard and so fast and you're like, I'm gonna fucking look after myself and I'm gonna make sure that if you leave, we could go back into childhood trauma and all that kind of shit, <laughs> we're not gonna go there. <laughs> but if you leave, I'm gonna be fine on my own. So how about you just fuck off already and I'll look after myself. Three years divorce, divorce papers signed, Christy, yet we came back together and I'm super proud of that. It's still a fucking shit fight a lot of the time, but I know that I get to choose to do things differently. And if my relationship is suffering and my kids are suffering, something's got to give in my business. But I also know that if I go back to my values, I can build the business that I want because I'm not gonna fucking, like I know that there's gonna be times where I'm going to bed too late and the kids are you know, with other people, but that might be for three weeks when I've got a deadline. Once that deadline's over, I'm taking a three week holiday. Yeah, and that's okay too, because you can't be balanced. Like I don't believe in balance all the time. It's bullshit. You've gotta go with the ups and downs and you just gotta make sure there's not too many downs. Cause it's when there's too many downs and you never see your kids and your relationship's falling apart, then it's shit. So don't think it's not gonna be hard. The business building thing's gonna be hard, but it can't be hard all the time. And it can't take away from everything else that you wanna get done. So we need layers. I pulled out a picture of an onion first and I was like, that's shit. This is <laughs> very good. <laughs> and we all like layers, right? We rebuild from the inside out. We learn about people's birth stories. We do all of those things in our business like when we're working, but being the technician, yeah, being in the business. Now we need to learn to be the entrepreneur that lays the layers for the business that we want and the impact that we want to make and the amplification that we want to have. So, pink equals values. <laughs> oh, it's purple. Has anyone tried to make a rainbow cake? I did once. It was interesting. The layers did not look that even. I can say that much. The outside looked pretty and then you just thought, oh, okay. You guys all have already, I can't say it hard enough, the foundation. Wait, no, let me just wait. 
double checking my notes. Your values are your true north. They're always going to bring you back. All the things that you fear in your business that might, that you choose not to go forward with in case you succeed because it means the thing's going to happen. Jack, can I share our story? Do you know the story? <coughs> we were sitting at the table. Is that all right? Yeah. I want Jack to be her, share her message, but it's not up to me to tell her to share her message, right? She has to do that when she's ready. I'd be like this for a while. Anyway, we had a planning meeting and do you want to share it? No, you would put it to words. <laughs> so we were talking about, so Jack is an amazing, well she's really fucking smart for one, has chosen to step into a supporting role. Yep. What would you say the reasons for that are, Jack? You've got a mic there. I get to use the mic. Oh, and I can't even make it work, <laughs> make it work for myself. There we go. Um, I stepped into a supporting role because I was over the hustle. I actually um, worked with a guy for the first six months of COVID and it was completely out of alignment with my life values and I was ruined <laughs> by that experience. I learned a lot by it but it was time to just step out from the hustle and support someone who I just truly believe in their mission um, and bring myself back to me, really, without the, yeah, I think you all understand what I mean by the hustle. Yeah, and that continual sell, sell, well, not sell in a, in a lovely way, but yeah, that's why. What are your two values, Jack? My two values are authenticity and connection. Okay. And so when we sat down, this is way better, we can have a conversation. Um, when we sat down and we talked about the message that you want to put out in the world, we talked about why maybe you weren't doing that. Um, and we talked about what success meant to you. Do you want to share a little bit about what, I hope you say the right thing now that you're yeah. ready. <laughs> Um, I think I started that conversation by saying you can't be what you can't see. Yep. Is that where you were heading? It was that bit. And then when I said, well, what if, what's holding you back? What if you are that person that people can see? Yeah, what's holding me back, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree in here is yourself, was what's holding me back is me um, and my belief that I'm not enough. It's the, it's the old stories. Um, who would listen to me, you know, all of those, those questions and stories. And also a fear of, you can flip it both ways, fear of failure or fear of success. And what, da, so if I was successful, am I taking time away from everything else that I value in life? Or if I fail, how does that reflect on me as well? So they were, they're, the, my, they're my barriers. Yeah, and that was the, one of the biggest things that stood out for me and what I wanted to help Jack to understand and hopefully you guys to understand is you can't get successful <coughs> if it's taking away from all the things that you value because that's not your version of success. And if you find that the new thing that you embark upon or the new product you launch or the new thing that you do is doing that, We've just done it in the wrong way. And we need to go, okay, this is not feeling right. The roadmap, we're off, off the map of alignment with our values to ach achieve the goal. So if you think about your values of being your true north, and if I take that back to Jack, it's like, well, if you're feeling all those things and you've got no time, what we're doing is not working. So we just got to sit down and do it different, yeah? And this is interesting because we also work with people, there's, there's some of you in the room that might go, well, what I'm doing now is out of alignment with my values. And you get to choose to do that differently and you get to choose to create the next thing. Or for example, Louise, can I share just briefly? You don't know what I'm sharing, so cool, awesome. <laughs> can I share your goal? Your goal to get out of face-to-face -face training? Is that all right? You're like, no, I'm sharing that in my presentation later. Fuck. <laughs> so Louise has a goal to exit face-to-face -face training or the majority of face-to-face -face training in her business. Very similar to my goal when I wanted to exit Body Beyond Baby. And 
it's not about going, well, this is al- out of alignment with my values. Now, for me, it was out of my life. Al- out of a mile uh, out of alignment with my values immediately but what would have happened if I'd have just gone okay I'm not doing that anymore no fucking money <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there so it's okay to know that your values and your true north like are pulling you towards your true north but you can't get out of where you are right now yeah it's okay to feel like that but then to allow and create a plan to get into alignment and follow that compass yeah so louise has a plan she's smarter than me her plan is further ahead she knows that she wants to get out of it in a certain amount of time rather than when your child just will not go to school (laughs) um but she has a plan and she's working on the plan and she's laying the the bricks and and checking in all the time with her values to make sure that she's going to get to where she wants to get to so if you keep your values in mind, you can't get it wrong. You're just going to readjust if it's not right. I'm going to talk forever. Um, who knows their trigger feelings? We've talked about this a bit. A lot of people in the room have talked to this. A lot of nodding head. Who's got no idea what a trigger feeling is? Cool. Thanks, Nikki. So your trigger feelings are the feelings that come up when you're doing something that's out of alignment with your value, your whole life values. Yeah? So this is how you're gonna know that you're not going north. You're going south. (laughs) Maybe just a little bit west, I don't know. It's not that bad. But we need to know what our trigger feelings are. I wrote some some down to, to help you guys. I get really fucking resentful when I'm doing something that's out of alignment with my values. <laughs> There's lots of giggles going on. Like, yep. take a photo of that. Of course, please do. <laughs> the other one is yelling at my kids. If I'm being a shitty mum, something's not okay and I need to change it, yeah? So challenge yourselves, do my little action, um, and try and write down some of the feelings that come up for you when you're out of alignment with your values. Um, anyone got anything that's not on there? Okay. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Ah, how did I not put that on there? Overwhelmed. Yeah, overwhelmed's a big one. Anyone got anything else? Anna? Just like not feeling creative, feeling very flat. Flat, yeah. And just not having that space, right? Because you need space to create. You need space to become the next thing. And if you just go, 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 there is none of that. There was somebody else over here. Julie. Guilt. Guilt. Yeah. Motherhood guilt yeah. is one. Yeah. Is that the only one for you or is there another one? Like, Sadness does, yeah. and irritability. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's lots of different words and it's really important that you know your two or three or ten maybe um, trigger feelings so that you can get back on track. The one that's interesting is envy. Envy just makes me stay in my own fucking lane. Yeah. I, we all feel it. I feel it towards some of the people that I respect the most sometimes. Like I'll accept that. But... I just need to honor the feeling and then go, yeah, but there's room enough for everyone. Yeah, we're all humans. Yeah, we're all gonna feel that not enoughness, the envy, the jealousy, the I'm, they're, too, they're really far ahead, I'm really far behind. You can let that consume you or you can let that go, get back in your own lane, let's go north. Um, <laughs> so now, if we know, if we took away the fear that whatever business we want to create (laughs) if we took away the fear of being out of alignment with our values and doing all of those things would the sky still be the limit would the sky now be the limit tomorrow's like i'm not convinced yet kind of but maybe but maybe not who can What's that word? Intellectually. (laughs) Who can intellectually understand that if you're heading in a direction and you know the feelings you want to avoid and you know if they come up you get to change direction and recreate, then you should be able to do whatever whatever you want to do. Does that make sense? Intellectually that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. But. (coughs) Who put a glass ceiling on that? Who can say the last time they shared a goal that straight after they shared their goal, either out loud or internally, they went, oh, but I probably won't do it. (laughs) Or, oh, but I'll shift the deadline because I'm not going to make it. 
Um, I had some more. We sabotage our goals, right? I only want four people to train with me because it's really intimate. Well, what if there was 15 people? Oh, okay, I'd do that then. But I only want four. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all those, like, what is the afterthoughts? Do you want to share, Lisa? You don't have enough tissues. Hang on. <laughs> I can share for you if you like. <laughs> what happened yesterday? Lisa has a vision. <laughs> Which one? The, the, the facility. Year the five-year five plan. plan. The five-year plan. Five year plan. <laughs> okay, so instead of ten years, it's now five-year plan. No, no, no. <laughs> Two year. One year. So <laughs> <take 12 years. laughs> Anyway, Next uh, I have a vision to have a facility where I have women's health physios, lactation consultants, massages, um, yoga, doula, all in one centre. Cool. Small, intimate, but. That's scary. <laughs> Maybe huge. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, cool. So that who thinks that's an awesome vision? Yeah. Yeah, cool. When are you gonna do that? When like, I remove the just. Just tell me <laughs> tell me exactly what you said to us yesterday. Yeah. When are when are you gonna do I'm that? Like to retire Imagine by fifty. You want to retire by fifty? Yes. So when are you gonna launch the thing? Twelve months. No no, but what did you actually say yesterday? <laughs> In five years. <laughs> How old are you, Lisa? <laughs> 44. <laughs> so when she's 49, but she's only started when I was 38. So I'm going to catch it up. She's closing it a year later. Because <laughs> she's retiring. I've got friends now, so I can invite friends. You guys are running the facility. <laughs> Like, so she's got this vision. What's, what's actually, so the other part of the conversation was, how's your business going right now? How's your business going right now? It's great. Great, you've got wait lists, yeah. full classes, can't manage anymore. Can't manage anymore. Can't manage anymore. Nope. Yeah. So, <laughs> why are we waiting five years? Because her friends haven't given her enough shit yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, um, I think imposter syndrome. Okay. Career change at 38. Yep. Got the Kleenexes out. <laughs> um, I don't know. Stepping, stepping out into the world with my name. Yep. Plus my business. My business has always been out there, but now I'm stepping into my name with my business. Yep. Um, I haven't shared this one with you, but um, I'm going to work with APTA for October. Uh -huh. Six for the cerebral palsy yeah. um, day, so I'm yep. sharing my birth trauma story with them. Yep. So that's a big, massive step out. Um, yeah, um. Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa's got a little glass ceiling going on. Yeah, I'm going to break that little middle one first. Just, just this one. Just, this just one? that one. Or this yeah. one. No, I'm going to go to the middle. <laughs> Jen's making me do it. I'm I know not. I can do it. I, know I will I can never do make it. any, just to make it clear, I will never yeah. make anyone do anything. Mm. Yeah? There's people that have come to me recently that have said, my coach has just told me to do this. Please don't ever let me tell you to do mm. anything. And hopefully when I'm talking to you, you recognize my change of language. And I, when I stumble and say you should, I'm like, fuck. No, you could. You could. Yeah? You could consider. There's never a do or a don't do. It's not, that's not my role. Yeah, the more, in an ideal world, the less I say, the better it is. It's like repeating back to you, offering you some guidance, offering you a framework, offering you a safe space. You guys get to do whatever you want to do. Um, never let anyone tell you what to do, especially if you don't know all the details. I've seen businesses in real trouble because coaches have said, don't do that, do this, and then they literally have no money coming in. Anyway, that's a side note, but an important one. What are you thinking now? <laughs> I'm just gonna do it. You're gonna do it? Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to come to that opening and We are. Yeah. There's champagne and Kleenex tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have a glass ceiling? Even if it's like, even if it's a little afterthought. I'm going to, um, this is different. I'm going to run a marathon, but I can't really do that. I'm going to, I want you to keep it in the realms of business, not the marathon. Jody, 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 go. But I will cry. That's okay, That's she okay. did. <laughs> I did already. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, no, but that was just happened to be in my bag. I wasn't prepared. Um, no, my massive one is a fear. Fear of failure. 
And like, so I, you know, I've got two paths at the moment I'm exploring. Mm -hmm. And the one that I want to go down, and it's from a security perspective more than anything, because I haven't shut off my biggest dream of being online. That's not going away. But it's the one that I want to go down, I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen. Why not? Well, well that's why I say to myself all the time, why not? But it's the fear yep. of failure. So what could you, even just flipping the thought, like when it comes up, what could oh, you... Oh, I just take action now. Yeah, cool. Okay. Which before I wouldn't have done. Yep. So now I just That's go... That's massive. Yeah, I just take action, next step, next step, next step. But it's still there. And then I feel the financial... But she has a glass ceiling that I feel like is raising. Yeah? Might not be broken yet, but... The awareness, and that's all I wanted to offer you guys today, is the awareness to understand these things and then to know how to step into the next thing. Before I brought on Jack, my glass ceiling was, I can't manage a team. I can't hold a team. Thank you, Jody. I'd had VAs that failed, that I just paid them, gave them like three things to do and then got frustrated because they weren't doing the work because I didn't want to deal with them. <laughs> Who else has done that? <laughs> um, I was still a sole trader, not a company, and I couldn't hold a team. So when someone said something about a company, I'd be like, oh no, I'm just a sole trader. Just sole trader. Just sole trader. Just sole trader. Can't hold a team. So I'm not going to get any. I'm never going to grow my team. I'm never going to grow bigger. I'm going to stay this size because it means that I don't need a team, which is all well and good. You can make a decent income on your own. Yeah. So then I did the action. I became a company and I got Jack and I had to learn how to pay super and tax and all that kind of stuff. But that was action, right? And that proved to me I can hold a team. Well, I can hold a team of one. Well, Mark's, bad, but Mark's still here too. <laughs> so we, can, we are a team, right? Yeah. And it challenges me all the time to figure out how to be the best person I can be to, to lead that team or to not even to lead but to help us lead together but what are the next bits of action that I you know so me putting a call out to say hey we need a team of mum of safe return to exercise certified um, master trainers is the next part of my journey and the next part of amplifying the message with something I will share with you guys in the coming weeks I'm not allowed to share it now but starting to get that ball, that happening is action, exactly the same as Jody. Does anyone else have a glass ceiling that they want to share? We'll go one more. Lauren. Oh, Christy. No. I'm going to, no, let's do both. Let's go Lauren first and Christy. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> that wasn't fast enough, Jack. <laughs> um, I guess my glass ceiling. Um, there's, I guess, two parts to it. Yep. Um, Breathe. You're good. So the first part is obviously stepping into the pre and postnatal space to train mums. Um, not being a mum yet. Um, yep. But then also um, not having grown up with a mum myself and being grown up with a single dad. Okay. Not knowing how to, um, I guess, connect. Connect with, with mums. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that's my, that's my glass ceiling. How have you been getting along this weekend? Um, really good. Everyone's amazing. Most of them are mum. <laughs> <laughs> You bring across like a really beautiful, caring, kind energy. That's Thank all you. you need. And I got that through a scream. Thank you. And I was pretty excited when you did say for 10 text sizes. <laughs> I was like, that one, I want that one. <laughs> Please, that one. So thank you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Christy, you're not out of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Okay. So. Oh my God. <laughs> well, no, because if I start with what Amplify means to me, 
it's to shout louder and to reach further and to make more impact. And so Active Soul is 12 years running um, and fine. And for me to shout louder and make more impact and uh, not just put a band-aid on women's well-being at the ground level, my big goal, like yours, is the comprehensive, collaborative women's wellness centre. So um, it's been, a, I think I spoke about it in one of our retreats mm. years ago, like this is like the big dream. And um, and I think every winter, because I'm based outside, I'm like, ugh, done, like get me inside, I need an indoor studio, I need, and I, if I'm going to make more impact, it needs to be bigger and bigger than just me. So um, months ago, I thought I'd found a space and I kind of floated the idea with a few of my favorite practitioners and yeah. and it didn't it didn't come into fruition and I was like okay well that's it's not the right time and it's not the right space and that's fine and more recently um, I looked at a place and um, and went actually this is this is good and it's big and uh, I have a client who's a designer and she came in with me and she saw my vision of what I wanted and she could put my vision on paper and so we've got this proposal, draft proposal of what I want the centre to be and um, and then I've taken that to, I've started the momentum and reached out to, to people and gone right, like let's do this, this is, we can do this. Um, but I've had a kind of, I've got a little bit of momentum, but I've also hit some stone walls and some things that, and it comes down to, I think I've spoken to a few people even yesterday going, this is what I want to do, but fuck, it feels daunting and massive and scary and and too big, too many overheads and it's too expensive. How do I even start with that? So it's, and that's my glass ceiling at the glass moment. Like, yeah. And it feels like it's just, yeah. So it's a plan, right, to get you from... A and yeah. B, and yeah. do you know all those numbers? Go yeah. talk to Rach, like all the numbers yeah. about how yeah. this works, how it doesn't work. But then equally, what you said previously in terms of things being in alignment, if I know that currently I'm stretched and mm. I work hard and Kate, if I know that I don't look after myself as well as I look after my women already, what does that look like if I'm going to put myself in that space where it is massive? You need a jack. <laughs> yeah, I need a jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. We've got a lot of gym like spaces opening soon. I'm excited. So I've got to hurry up. Apparently, I could actually stay here all day now. I'm quite comfortable. Um, so we must seek awareness for our own glass ceiling. So I'd love you all, it's that little thing again, to write down one thing, that you, even one thing, or take it away, think about it later, I don't mind when you do it, but try and write down what you feel like your glass ceiling is. So we've got more layers, we've got values, we've got trigger feelings, we've got glass ceilings, and now I wanna make sure, like, to just bring awareness to the layer of confidence, I'm not gonna go right into it today, Confidence is built upon continued action, yeah? So the thing that you're not doing because you're scared of doing it, the flyers you're not handing out, the, the partnerships you're not making, all of those things, you will build your confidence as you do them. Yeah, I know it's a thing amongst people everywhere, but it's especially a thing amongst some, some people I speak to in the room and also outside of the room. But just do those things that you're not confident at doing. Do them really badly, yeah? and then do them again and again and again and you'll get good. I always start a talk really badly, <laughs> I need to work on that, but I keep doing it again and again and again and again. And then I'd like you to give yourselves permission. Permission to refine that vision that you had or you let yourself have when maybe you were younger or not or I don't know, what happened to take it away or maybe it's not gone but maybe you've just not been brave enough to step into giving yourself permission to do that thing yet. So start to think about, and I will, there'll be bits in the, over the weekend where I'll come back and I'll be like, okay, who's had a thought about that? Who's had a thought about that? So give yourself permission to build the big thing. I can help you build, or lots of people can help you to build the, the path in which you're gonna get there, 
but you've got to allow yourself the dream and the permission to want the thing before we can build the path. Be aware of ease versus force. Um, if it's feeling really hard, sometimes that's okay, sometimes it's not okay. Yeah? So just give yourself, you know, have that awareness in everything, everything that you're doing to ask, does this feel easy? Does this feel hard? Yes, it's going to be, you're going to need to step out of your comfort zone, do all the hard things, but if it's constantly feeling hard in all the ways, just have that awareness and check in and see what's going on. Bring it to the table, bring it to a hot seat. Let's have a, a conversation about it. But there's going to be a journey, right? We're all, going to, we're all on a journey. And there'll be twists and turns, and there'll be days that you're feeling lost, and days that you're feeling really aligned, and days that you just don't want to do it all anymore. Um, and that's all completely okay, yeah? Allow yourself to go on that journey. It's going to look like that and around, and, and you're going to stop off in the wrong place sometimes, and that's completely okay. Um, you're going to win, you're going to fail, you're going to change direction. You might try multiple things before you get the thing. I'm thinking about, let's change the membership next year. It's probably going to happen, you guys. Nothing will change for you guys, it never will. Um, and then together, we can reach the sky, right? It's exciting. Who's excited? I'm excited. I'm going to... Um, Oh, okay. <laughs> this was last time we got together. I don't know how we, big we can build that. <laughs> oh, who's up for like a massive pyramid out the back? Maybe. <laughs> um, that was the last retreat. Um, we all have our own unique part to play, yeah? In your own way. There's no right or wrong. Um, there's no voice that doesn't make sense. There's no voice that shouldn't, that isn't heard because there's women out there that need to hear your unique voice and the mum safe brand cannot do what it wants to do or what it's out here what what we're on a mission to do without each and every single one of you guys so to round out my start of the morning what we've got we did this in our first um, retreat we took our values and we wrote them on a piece of paper and then we wrote our names on the back and then we put them in a spot for the weekend. And if you feel to, you have to. Um, you go around to somebody, so let's say Christy, what are your two values, Christy? Integrity and connection. Integrity and connection. So Christy's gonna write on a piece of paper, integrity and connection in the middle or wherever she wants to actually. She's gonna write her name on the back. <laughs> that piece of paper, it's, it's colored card it's going to sit on the back any time you have an interaction with Christy and you see her living into integrity and connection, you get to go write about it on the piece of paper. You can also take this into the wider world. So I know that some of you have connected online or someone's helped you or whatever it may be. I want everyone to walk away with, it's, we bought frames for everyone, they didn't break. Um, you're going to have your values in a frame and messages from people that are here inside the um, inside the frame, yeah. Um, Jack's giving paper out, out at the moment. Why don't you, I, let's pop it at the back, Jack. I know that you're doing what we've planned. <laughs> um, there's different coloured paper, so if, you, if you've got a green one and you don't like green, that's fine, you can go grab a different colour paper. <laughs> um, get a colour that you like, because that's important when we're putting these things out there, like things that resonate with you are really important. Um, Organise it, do it, and then we will put it all together at the end for you. But I'll make sure we facilitate that. Um, I've got one more thing that I want to do, and I'm really going to cry. And so is everyone else. Um, there was a person that was supposed to be with us this weekend, and she's not. One of my last interactions with Isabella, like she was messaging throughout the whole kind of process or journey that she went on, was that 
there's so much. She was in hospital telling the nurses about their pelvic floors <laughs> and trying to tell them that they need to find a mum safe trainer. She's like, Jen, there's not enough mum safe trainers in Victoria. I'm like, there's not enough anywhere. Isabella was such a fucking awesome human. Um, despite what she was going through, she was every conversation with me was not about her. It was about her clients or about not letting someone else down or any of those things. So. We, we dug out, I think I can go deeper than that, and I'm going to try, but we dug out Il Isabella's values and we're going to create a frame for her and it would be really cool if you guys wrote on that and we're going to send it to her family from us. Um, one of the other things I wanted to do, and you guys have to fucking dance. This is not an option, just so you all know. Um, Isabella liked the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> The dancing is happening! <laughs> Come on, Craig! Craig, let us know! part of her in what we choose to go on and do. We're all in it together. And that is it.